designed by Maurice Griffiths. <laughs> you pay extra for that, do you? Back in the day. I mean, he was the editor of the uh, Yachting Monthly for a long time and done a, a lot of boating on the East Coast. So Tim, what is it that's so special about this boat? Well, there's not many uh, boats these days that have lee boards. So you've got two foot of uh, draft. So you can get in places like Bradwell at low water. It's very handy. Um, flat bottom more or less, so you can uh, park it on flat surfaces. You don't have to worry too much. But uh, Which is great for the East Coast. It is. I mean, it's, I, I, we, we actually belong to the Humber Yore Club at, on the Humber. I took it up there for a year and it, you know there we have very shallow water there but somehow it didn't quite fit and it is lovely down here so it really was designed for this area and it, it suits it down to the ground. So why is it so barge like? Well because I think you know the first half of the last century they were building yachts locally like fishing boats or barges so yachtsmen got a, a little smack or a little bawly or a little barge and those got developed and there's quite quite a few barge yachts around on the east coast and uh, Morris Griffiths had one for a, for a while and I think he used his experience in them and uh, designed this you can see the advantages you know shallow water access to places now I think this is a great family boat actually because there's plenty to keep the kids occupied it's it's not gonna it's not thrashing the windward boat. You're not gonna be hosing the kids with with spray for hours on end. You're just not gonna do that. When you do go to windward, it does go to windward, but it, it, it it's fairly steady, and you don't get a lot of water this far, you know, back as far as the cockpit, and uh, plenty of space for those days. And the other thing about the boat that's, that's different from this is a plywood boat. They, they use plywood to skin a frame boat so they made a, a traditional built boat but instead of planking it they covered it in plywood which is quicker than planking it actually adds more strength because it's uh, solid there's no gaps uh, but th that design has moved on so when you're making a plywood boat these days modern plywood yachts are designed like a monocoque not like a traditional build with, with traditional frames and hog and keel and all the rest of it and then covered in plywood it's a monocoque so it's a bit of a, you know, a bit of a dinosaur, a bit of a heavy dinosaur, but not very heavy. <laughs> it does have a, a keel down the middle on the outside. It's about the dimensions of a brick, and uh, that's bolted for about 20 feet the length of the bottom. So when you do ground, you're sat on that. And then inside, we've got some uh, lead ballast under this solid mahogany floorboards. A lot of quality timber in this boat. It's 30 foot long, 8 foot 6, but you, you've got to remove a little bit extra for the lee boards. Um, the catch, but you can get a, a, a sloop version. Uh, and like I say, you can get one with a central ballast keel and, and fin keels that take up, uh, bill keels that take up a, a, a bit more draft than this does. Well, we could talk about the guy that built it. Yes. Let's talk about so, Peter North, a member of the Blackwater Sailing Club, um, came across, as I understand it, a failed project and uh, the guy had done very little and he managed to pick up the, all the timber and the plans and everything in 1970 and spent 20 years building it so finished it in 1990 so he's 40 when he started 60 when he finished and then for about 10 years ill health got the better of him and his wife but they used to sail together and uh, when that happened, the boat was out of the water on a trailer. They, they're all out of water on the trailer in the winter here. But they kept it out of the water on a trailer for about eight years and just came down at the weekends to see their friends, stay on the boat. Because after you put 20 years in it, you want to still use it even if you're past sailing it. And he made some stairs to get to the boat, which were the same tread and rise as the stairs at home, so his wife wouldn't have a problem getting aboard. When did you buy her? I bought it in 2011, the end of 2011. I was looking to retire, well, and, and I was going to build a Phil Bolger box. Uh, but I didn't think it would sell in the UK. It's very unusual boats. So I'm looking for something similar. 
that I could build. And the, the, the nearest thing was this. And I got in touch with John Williams of the Eventides Association, and um, he said, I know where there's one for sale, because I particularly wanted a leeboard version, because I've been used to using leeboards, because I used to sail canoes. That's not as racing IC canoes. It, it's the uh, oak canoe with a sail on it about the size of an optimist. We sail them with leeboards, and they do go quite fast. Uh, so I was used to lee boards, I got faith in them, and um, so I went for this, came down and looked at it and thought, mm, it's a bit tatty, uh, a little bit, and I wasn't going to buy it, but we were, because I came from North Yorkshire, I was offered this day of an hour, a friend of mine came to bring some sense to the, and then in the morning we had, uh, went out and got bacon and made bacon butties, and I was standing in the uh, galley where you are right now, I was just sitting down on the edge of that uh, engine cover and I changed my mind because it was so comfy. It was just so comfortable. And uh, the, the, the bunks are comfortable. They've got a little hollow in them. Um, the only thing that's not comfortable is the lack of head height, as you probably noticed. Uh, the, uh, somebody suggested we should be wearing tin hats in this boat. <laughs> you know, you can still stand up under the hatch in the, in the um, fore cabin and the same here in this dog house. You can stand up which is, uh, you're going to stand up somewhere as your back just gives up on this. But having lee boards, it makes it more difficult to sail? Or more work? I mean, the lee boards are only plate steel, which is the way they were designed. And they're simple, and they're bolted through the top sides. They're not like a barge where it's, it's uh, from deck level. Uh, which in some ways makes them more convenient, but you've got to make sure they don't leak, the bolts don't leak, which would, Friend helped me redesign the bolts, and we got we got we don't have any leaking there. But uh, it, you've got to be making some speed with a badly designed, you know, with with a, with a non aerofoil section. So when you tack, you you've just got to let the boat build speed before you get any reduction of leeway. Uh, yeah, it, it's best at not making leeway when it's quite windy. In in light weather, it does make it, and it doesn't point that high either. But you still get to windward. I mean, I don't, I don't use it. You know, people say it's a motor sailor. I went and bought it. I just bought it and I was standing back and I was going to move my car. And this old guy leaned out of a van and he said, lovely boat that, but it'll sail like an animated kitchen, uh, chicken table. An animated chicken table. So I thought to myself, that doesn't sound good. But actually it sails to windward. I mean, you saw it sailing to windward. It doesn't point as high. I've tried it against real barges, and we don't point as high as a barge. We didn't point as high as Signet back there. Yeah, I think it's it also sailing. It is. It rewards really concentrating on what you're doing when you're going to windward. You have to really concentrate. I mean, it originally had six bunks. You get six people in here all at the same time. Nobody can do anything. So I, I usually sail with no more than three, though we have occasionally sail with four. That's the limit. So I've taken one of the bunks out. That's why you can see the side of the boat there. This bunk's still here, and it'll fold down and make a seat. And you've got one bunk in the front, and the other bunk space has been taken away just so that I can put the dinghy in there and the bits and bobs and beach chair. And now, is it true that she's up for sale? I put it up for sale for one year, and uh, we've got people looked at it. But uh, it, all sorts of things happened that made it not, people didn't buy it, sadly. So, so it's not, for, not up for sale? Well, you know, everything's for sale. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you could, uh, you could but, talk to me about it. But watch this space.